It's honey day. Honey day. Yay. Back in the bee yard today. If you caught our last bee, bee video, we, which was yesterday in, in real time, we installed some bee escape boards between our supers and our brood boxes to try to get all the bees to go down to the brood chamber. So today we should have a pretty easy task of removing our supers and seeing if we got any honey this year. Well, we know we have honey. How much honey is the question? Yeah, so let's get started. So we'll start first with our flow hive. I talked a little bit about it in our last video about how the bees seem to have a hard time staying ahead of the game when it comes to the flow hive. All the cells in the flow hive shift in order for the honey to pour out the bottom. But when you put it in, you close it, but there's cracks all the way around those. And it doesn't seem like the bees can ever really get things sealed up enough that they feel comfortable storing honey in it. There's times when we'll come out here and the whole flow hive will be completely filled with bees. And they're all working and they're doing different things, but they never end up storing any honey in it. But we'll check it out. Nothing. Nothing. If any of the frames were going to be have honey in them, it would be the center ones. They generally fill those first. And it's completely empty. Full or not, we're definitely pulling the flow hive. We're not going to leave it on over winter. We just create way too much space for the bees to try to manage over the winter. The bee escape board. It seemed like it worked. Um, it seems like there's less bees in, in here than yesterday, but when we get to hive number one back there, we'll, we'll know better. But we'll pull one of these frames from our brood chamber from the edge, just to get a good indication of how much honey they do have stored, since they obviously weren't storing it in the flow hive. This is not honey that we're going to take from them will all stay. Oh, wow, it looks good. Pull this one. That one looks good. <laughs> pull that one. <laughs> I gotta pull this one first, though. You want your hanger? Um, yeah, the side hanger thing would be good. Not a lot in The outside of that frame, the inside though, quite a bit of honey in there. It's not super thick and it's not all capped yet. And this was your split. Did you already tell them that? Um, so this one was, we were surprised being first time beekeepers that we were able to split um, a hive. So this is the split, I don't know when they got started, probably, it was right at, um, around June 20th, right? Right at solstice? The summer solstice is when we split the hive. Yeah. Then he stores, some of this is older honey, it's been here for a while. A lot of nectar down in there. These are just falling off. Yeah, normally they're holding on for dear life, making bridges and stuff. That's fine. Enough. Yep, we'll move on to the next one. So on to hive number one. I switched, I put on my gloves. I think I got tagged by a yellow jacket a minute ago. And Rachel made an observation when we first got here. One of the things that I, that one of my oversights from my setup that I performed on the last video of throwing these Vivaldi boxes up here in place of a top inner cover was that it has a top entrance. 
And if you just saw that little sucker right there, that is a yellow jacket. So in theory, what could be happening is my bee escape board worked. All these bees went down to be with their queen, which left this pretty vacant or 90% vacant. And now the yellow jackets are going in through my top entrance and robbing my hive. So we have gloves now. So definitely a mistake on my part. Oh, I see lots of bees. But we're learning. Mm -hmm. You see lots of bees? Yeah. Not yellow jackets? Yes. That's good. <laughs> yeah, hopefully there's enough in there that they can defend themselves properly. The yellow jackets don't seem to stay long. Oop, there he just went. I saw him go down. So I would definitely say that the bee escape board in this case was either one not effective or two the bees wouldn't leave because the yellow jackets were going in and raiding their honey but either way since there's a lot of bees in here now we're gonna have to pull these frame by frame brush them off transfer them over out of smoke. So that first super, the one that I pulled off, that's the one that's been on there the longest. That went on somewhere around the time we did the split. Yeah, there's not much in here at all. Part of the reason we did the split, the two bottom brood boxes were becoming honey bound. There was no more places for the queen to lay. They had it packed. Pollen, nectar, brood, everything. There was nothing empty. That's when the queen cells started forming on the bottom of the brood frames. That's when we decided, all right, three more days from now, summer, stole, so, summer solstice, we're gonna pull out, we'll make our split. So the top super that I pulled had been on since then. This one we added later on in the season. For some reason, they didn't do much with this one. We can clean them up at the house. All right, so I, our theory behind this is we want to take, we know that that first top one has a lot of honey in it. We want to be able to take the honey off, move it into an empty super so we can keep a cover on it as we're going because we don't want to spawn a robbing frenzy here. We figured since this one... doesn't really have a lot of honey in it, we could use this one without causing too much disturbance to everyone. The outside edge, plenty drawn, not a lot capped. A lot of these cells are actually empty.
So second frame in, a little better. That side, not so much. Much better. Very thick. Still some bees on that one. They're get, they, they burrow deep down inside the combs. I really wish my bee escape boards would have been more successful. I don't like brushing them off like this, but that's why they make brushes. also why we wish the flow hive would work for us so we don't have to disturb them to harvest the honey and another grape frame thick oh yellow jacket Oh, yep. Yeah, there he is right there. There's quite a few yellow jackets in there. <laughs> Wonder how, what the trick is to keeping them out. Yeah, I think not having that, having that extra top entrance there was plenty of bees in here. They should be able to defend. Defend their hive just fine, I would think. So if you guys have any advice for me on this yellow jacket issue that I'm having, please let me know. You know, this honey's dark, dark, dark. Older honey. They land him back on there. Get out, get out. I think that last one was one of our best ones. This one is not too bad. That side's barely starting to be drawn. I did notice some throughout the year, some, another yellow jacket. Some tendencies on some of my frames, these black ones versus the yellow ones that I've been getting mm -hmm. from Man Lake. They seem to like the yellow a lot better and I'm not sure Probably because they're pre-treated with beeswax. If it's, yeah. If it's really something that's happening, or if it's my imagination, or luck, or... There really is a big difference. Go ahead and land again. One looks nice, but it's just not as heavy. Backside is yellow jacket. Got him. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So, honey harvest, very first time ever. How'd you think it went? The objective was completed. We pulled our supers. We pulled hive or frames filled with honey from our beehive. Yep. Um, the process of doing so while filming, while filming, while trying to explain, while doing something the first time, missing some equipment that I should have brought with me that I didn't have, all of that went terrible. Yeah, 
Well, every, I, every single time we do one of these major tasks for the first time with the bees, we always learn something. Like oh, your, yeah. your box has been built up over the season to know what you need when you come out here. Yeah. Um, I'll say from my perspective, because I'm the major honey eater in the family, uh, I guess I was kind of disappointed how much we, it looks like we got anyway. I, I'm definitely grateful, don't get me wrong, but they were doing like so well when we first got them and into the early summer. Um, so much so that we were adding the multiple supers because they were filling it up and it just seemed like they never really did anything with that second super. Yeah, I'm not sh quite sure why. This was, from an expectation standpoint, this started off in the spring for us as a single nuke. Mm -hmm. Um, it blossomed, it blossomed, it filled, it filled two brood boxes to the point that they became honey bound. Started forming queen cells, that's when we made the decision, let's split this hive off. Second hive took off. Mm -hmm. um, they hatched the queen, she went out, she mated, she laid eggs, and, and both hives are doing really well. We just didn't get as much honey as we thought mm -hmm. we were going to. I guess we should be grateful since it's our first year that we got any. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. I mean, they have huge deeps filled with honey to get them through winter, so right. we didn't have to touch those. That was good. Yep, and Flow Hive, um, I think we're going to readdress Flow Hive again in the spring. We've tried it two different times on our hives, for one for about a month and a half. This last time was two months, three yeah, months? two months, probably. Um, so we need to learn more on that and figure out what's going on, why. That, yeah. Why is it just building and never filling? Yeah, because I really, really want that to work. Because, like, what you saw tonight with us having to interrupt them so much and brush them off, and they get angry and aggravated, and we get stressed and nervous, I just, I don't want that process at all. I want to be able to go in, turn a tap, get my honey, and say <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so I don't know if it's, I mean, I've seen people be successful with it. So right. unless they're in there, like, filling those flow hives <laughs> behind the scenes i guess they could be yeah and there's been a lot of people that have been unsuccessful with them too so well yeah. we'll give it a chance we're we're experimenting experimentees when it comes to everything to home study, yeah. <laughs> gardening bees yeah whatever it is but um so it was our first year so give us grace for anything that you did see tonight that we probably did wrong um and Feel free to give us constructive criticism because we're here to learn. That's the whole intent of our channel is to learn and share what we're learning with you, share our mistakes. Um, so no need to necessarily point out the obvious, like, <laughs> Rachel, that's not a real bee suit. I know that. <laughs> but we're just getting by. We're just learning and uh, look forward very much every video for any good feedback you guys have and tips and tricks. Agreed. And those yellow jackets, they really bothered me. There was a lot. I think I, I explained earlier in the video part of the reasoning behind it, I think, but I'm wondering if it's been a problem for a while now. Yeah, it could be. Could be. If you got any advice on that, definitely share it with us, okay? Thanks, guys. See you on the next one. Oh, we'll see you when we actually draw that honey out. All right. You going to eat some? Yeah, of course. Okay. Bye. <laughs>